Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is the Unravel Collective. My name is Yvonne and I channel the Ninth Dimension Arcturian Council. Today is your August Q&A and it has been a month since I have been with you, approximately, maybe a little longer. I've been on vacation. I went to New Mexico and spent a lot of time there on our land in Abiquiu and just had some fun and relaxing. You know, I went and visited the Grand Canyon. I went to Sedona for a few days. I went to the Petrified Forest. So beautiful, beautiful opportunity to just be with the land and be with family. So, so grateful for that and grateful to be back with you. So as I said, this is your August Q&A. It is a little bit late because also I got sick when I returned home. So I wasn't up to channeling that first week of August. Now here we are, and for those of you who don't know, the first Saturday of every month I ask you sub to submit your questions to receive guidance from the Arcturians. I channel five questions from all the emails sent to me and uh, share them with you on the first Saturday of every month. Another thing before we get started is I would like to announce to you that I am going to open my Akashic Records readings again very soon to the public. Right now I am going through my wait list. I'm assuming that September and maybe early October will get booked up by the wait list. But if you are interested in um, signing up or getting booked for an Akashic Records reading in October, November, December, uh, please go to my website and sign up to my email list so that you will be informed of when those readings are opened back up to the public. Another thing that I'm going to be opening up very soon to the public is channeled guidance from the Arcturians. So this is very different from your Akashic Records readings. This is guidance from the Arcturians just like we're doing right here right now. And those will be sent to you via audio recording. They are not going to be a scheduled booked time to meet with me. Instead, they will be audio recordings that I do in my own time and then send to you. So if you are liking what you see here um, where I offer free guidance and you want to absolutely get guidance from the Arcturians for sure, then you will have the opportunity to pay for that service and get yourself a private audio recording of your channeled guidance answering one question that you send to me. So that's coming up soon. Again, um, sign up to my email list on my website in the description below so that you know when that will be offered uh, to the public. Okay, let's get started with our Q&A. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I do not read these emails ahead of time. I kind of just go on um, what is calling me or what's pulling me in. Uh, so let's see, let's start with Donna. And her question is, we have built and lived in our beautiful home in the country for 45 years. We are older, 70s, and feeling we should move to be closer to our family, downsize and be in a larger center. But we are so emotionally attached and just can't seem to make the decision. Guidance from the Octarians would be so appreciated. So let's see. Okay. Donna, yeah, I remember you. All right. Um, let's see what comes through for Donna. First, we would like to welcome Donna into this space and say hello again. It is always a pleasure to offer guidance and especially in terms of next action steps, yes. And so what we would like to uh, remind you of is that we are not here to make decisions for you. So we want to first say this very clearly that you 
and all humans have the capacity to make these choices for yourselves based on going inside and uh, contacting the inner guidance with which you hold within yourselves. And there is always free will and choice in the matter of what you choose to do for yourselves and for those around you. What is it that is going to have you feel uplifted so it's very important here that we connect with ourselves and our own heart in making this difficult choice, yes, because you are emotionally attached, as you put it, to the location in which you have been for many, many years. And so what we see here is that this location geographically has been one that has cared for you over time. And so, of course, you are emotionally attached to this location. The place itself has been cultivated with love, support, evolution, time and time and time again, holding you, creating space for you to come home to yourselves, to feel comforted by your own inner guidance, to be here in support of your growth, this has been a location that you chose without even knowing that this is an area of support for you that would hold you through many, many obstacles, many challenges, many joys as well. And so, yes, of course, it would be difficult to say goodbye to this area, goodbye to this home. Goodbye to the trees, to the wildlife, to the sky even, that lives and shines here uh, around you and within you. So let's see what guidance wants to come through for you in regards to moving closer to family or staying here in this location, again, with the reminder that this is always up to you and your choice. We are getting the sense that uh, this is a location again that has taken very good care of you. So what we're seeing is that this is a place with which to feel safe, to feel cared for, to feel nurtured. Again, there is great energy around this home and this geographic location. There is great support because you have created relationship here. Again, as we said, relationship with the land, relationship with the home, relationship with the wildlife even that is there. You have many friends here. You have spirit that is very strongly supporting you in this location. Now, as we take a look at well, what would it be like if you moved? What would that be like? Again, we find that this would be supportive. We find that even the energy here at this home would send you off with love, would send you off with gratitude, would send you off with um, a positive um, wishes, yes? Blessings, blessings. Thank you for the time we had here. Thank you for the time um, and the opportunity to be a part of your life, to be a part of your energy field, to be a part of your growth. And we see you off. May you enjoy whatever is to come next. So what we're seeing is that either way, my dear one, you will be supported we're seeing that either way, you will find still more opportunity for growth and comfort and safety. But we cannot give you the answer to the choice that you should make for yourselves. We simply ask you to look deeply within yourself and sit with each choice leaving a place where you feel so emotionally attached. If you sit with this, do you sense that this is a grief 
that does not cause you to feel as if you would be able to move through it in a course of growth or evolution. Because we can hold grief and we can be sad and still find space for the growth that comes from on the other side of the sadness that we can still have gratitude for what we have, have, have experienced here and we will hold that in sacred union within ourselves forever. Because the energy and the relationship with which you have cultivated there will never leave your tissues, will never leave your spirit. Or does it cause you uh, anxiety? Does it cause you to feel a closing in, a, const a constriction, a sadness that you think you could not overcome? Perhaps it is something that would cause ill feeling within you. Perhaps it ha causes you to feel, um, how do we say, uh, dis discomfort in the idea of, uh, I just don't think that I would feel myself if I was not here, settled here, firmly standing here on this ground in this home. I think I would feel um, unsteady perhaps in a way that would cause me to um, perhaps not be of right mind or of right heart. So these are things to consider, and only you can answer these things for yourselves. You and your partner or whoever is directly involved in the move. In terms of being close to family, my dear one, we see that your heart is always with your family. So distance um, although may be challenging physically, you are with them at all times and you can choose to be with them for longer amounts of time if necessary, if need be, for your spirit, for their spirit, to support, to love, or to have them be closer and nearer to you in the case of you needing more assistance as time goes on. But when what we sense right now is that being in a location, uh, in this particular location, will actually cause you to feel great lightness and comfort in which would cause um, greater health for you. Um, and so, assistance may not be needed um, if you are here because you are cultivating and living and breathing within a space that causes you to have good good health. Does this make sense to you? So this is our guidance for you today. Thank you very much for your question. This has been the Ninth Dimension Arterian Council. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Donna, for that question. Okay, next question. Um, okay, uh, Hane, um, I'm reaching out because I'm interested in becoming an animal communicator. I'm curious to know whether I will need to undergo formal training or if this ability will come from my inner knowledge. All right, let's see what comes through for you. Hello, dear one, thank you for asking this question. We are happy to offer you guidance. And yes, we see that you are naturally gifted at this already. And while uh, one is uh, able to um, inquire, let's say, formal training or acquire formal training or look into it, uh, we do not see that this would be necessary for you unless it is something you found to be important to you. And uh, we do see that um, 
perhaps you are interested in uh, what else is there to learn? What are things that I do not know? Uh, and in this case, this would be something that we would say would be very good for you. If you would like to have more formal training, then absolutely we encourage you to take this path because there are things that we can always learn from another person, yes? We are all gifted in receiving information in our own unique ways. And so when we are presented with the information that someone else has, this opens the pathway and door to uh, the possibility of ourselves cultivating something that we were not aware of was within our reach. Um, there are techniques uh, and whatnot that can be shared uh, among all of you who are interested in the same thing. And this also comes in the form of you being able to share the way that you receive information, techniques that you use. Um, so with your classmates, with your teacher, everyone gets to share in the idea of um, cultivating communication uh, in a way that causes them to explore new pathways. So this could be something that inspires you. This could be something that offers new, new openings, new capacity, new knowledge in how to open yourself up and be better available for animal communication. However, we also do see that this is already a natural gift of yours and that uh, you would on your own the more and more that you practice, the more and more that you involve yourself in opportunity to uh, experience communication, to experience opening yourself up to your gift, that you will continue to evolve. You will continue to develop new techniques and new abilities and new ways of communication. Uh, so this is something uh, either way you will continue to grow in Either way, you will continue to evolve. One is simply being in community and one is simply taking the time to be with yourself and to understand and continue to open yourself into new pathways of technique and development and skill. But you are a natural at this, so this is not something that uh, will that will um, not continue to grow as long as you continue to practice and dive into the experience for yourself. So again, here we are uh, in, in a reminder, let's say, of we cannot choose this for you. We cannot say yes, no, uh, formal training, yes, no. This is up to you. This is up to you to find within yourself what is it that I want to go to formal training for? Is it because I feel that I have doubt of my own skill? Or is it because uh, I feel that I would continue gathering and culting more information in community and learn techniques perhaps that will open me up a little faster than if I were working on my own. Either way, you are going to continue to evolve here. So what um, is it that you need or that you would like to receive from formal training? And is that something that you find uh, would be of better benefit to you? Or could you say, eh, I don't need uh, much actually. I don't actually want to be in community or I don't want the opportunity to learn different or new techniques. I would like to do this on my own. I am naturally gifted. Let me just move forward in my own time. Uh, in both ways are your own time, dear, but what we're saying is that um, being in community is really the greatest benefit to formal training or being on my own. And you may also find community that is not formal training. Perhaps you find a uh, community that meets in a club of sorts or something like this, or a group setting in which you still receive 
um, support, you still receive the idea of learning new knowledge, new techniques, new ways of coming into your ability and to honing your capacity and your skills through group and community that doesn't necessarily need to be formal training. Either way, you will be able to present this work <coughs> to others and to those you want to serve and you will be in integrity with your skill level um, as you continue to evolve, as you continue to practice and learn more. Either way, you are not going to um, be halted, so to speak, because this is a natural gift of yours that wants to be expressed. Thank you for this question. This has been the Ninth Dimension Arcturian Council. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you for that question. All right, next question. Let's see, um, Hannah. Hi. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Hannah. I'm from Sweden. I have a massive, I had a massive burnout last year. Since then, I've been suffering from anxiety, depression, and chronic fatigue. My big question is, will I ever get better? I would also appreciate if you had some comforting words for me to give me strength. Uh, this experience is so extreme and hard for me and my family. Oh, Hannah. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, what wants to come through for you uh, regarding this massive burnout and suffering from anxiety, depression, and chronic fatigue. Will I ever get better? Okay. Hello, my dear one. Thank you for this question. So the first thing we're seeing here, dear, is that we are not too concerned about where you are in this moment because what we see is that this is a, a moment in which you are coming to know yourself more truly and you are coming into a reset so to speak and this is um, not although it can be of course experienced as something negative and challenging this is actually not a negative space for you to be in but rather a great opportunity for you to expand into yourself so when you describe your experience as massive burnout yes this was you saving yourself so this is what we would really like you to understand and to come home to that you saved yourself so you did not fail you did not um, uh, uh, fall into uh, an abyss of, of, uh, of, of unknowing, so to speak. We know this is how it may feel because you have dropped yourself into a space of unknowing. However, your body and your spirit knew so strongly that it was time to move on, that it was time to do something different, that it was time to live fully from your heart, that it caused you great um, emotional strife to make a change. We have to take action. We have to take action. So although this action whatever it is you chose to take at this moment of burnout although it is causing you depression and anxiety and maybe confusion frustration sadness this is the area in which you must be patient with yourself to have compassion for yourself to know that you are actually in a moment of saving yourself. And it's just a moment of transition. It's a moment of transformation. It's a moment of letting go. It's a moment of being honest with yourself. It's a moment of truth. It's a moment of clarity. And from this, will come the courage to take your next step. And you do not need to rush yourself. 
All that's needed is patience and compassion for saying, ah, okay, that was not what I wanted. That, that was actually causing me great um, grief, stress, perhaps illness, perhaps um, a sense of um, instability within myself. So much so that it had to come to a place where something had to be done. Truth had to be revealed. And so now we fall into a space of unknowing. And this is the most beautiful space to be in because anything can be created from here. Anything can be created from here. Here, where you are now in a stillness, perhaps, a stillness that feels scary, maybe, a stillness that feels lost, confused, or unmotivated, but a stillness regardless that offers you the opportunity for the honesty with which your body is asking of you. It is, it is requesting that you say what it is that you do not want, what it is that you do want. What do you want to create? What do you want your life to be like? And when we say your life be like, we mean what is the experience you wish to have within yourself? And then you choose things that cause that experience for yourself. They can be small things, they can be big things. But each moment you live into the experience of which you want to feel and be and live and breathe. And so each moment gets to be a choice toward that. So what we see right away is this courage that you took to be honest with yourself. And again, we want to emphasize that you are saving yourself. You were in the midst of saving yourself. And that took great courage. And so when we rise up to take a great action, perhaps, we will oftentimes fall back down into a space of um, what feels like sadness because we have let go of something. We have uh, almost as if uh, when great adrenaline comes into the body, you will fall into a space of great rest. Yes, you need time to recuperate, to recover from a challenging time or a challenging moment where a lot of energy had to be used. So here we are in a space of a lot of energy was used, a lot of energy was taken to make a great choice. And now we are in the recovery mode, the recovery period. So give yourself time and space to recover. Give yourself time and space to be honest with yourself. Give yourself time and space to let go of that which you do not want or need any longer. Your body is telling you. It's time. It's time to make different choices. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being um, uh, open to the idea of fulfilling my heart. So do not be scared, dear one, because you are in a wonderful space where again, we want to remind you you are flowing within a space where anything now is possible for being created. And you have the strength to do it because you have already demonstrated this. 
but be patient and, and, and compassionate with yourself. Nothing needs to be rushed. Allow yourself the integration time, the integration period of this recovery so that you can come out on the other side with more clarity of what it is you want to experience in your life. And then have the clarity of making the choices to cultivate that experience within yourself moment to moment to moment. Thank you for your question. This has been the Ninth Dimension Arterian Council. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that question. Okay, next question. And I just want to say that my phone is at 20%, so in case uh, this turns off, I will try to, um, well, do something about it. Okay, uh, this is from Patricia. Her question is, am I Arcturian or something else? Um, and I don't understand this part. And are all of us tuning into you Arcturian? I don't um, know what that means. So I'm just going to um, focus on am I Arcturian or something else, okay? This is Patricia. Hello, my dear one, thank you for this question. The first thing we want to say is yes, you are indeed Arcturian. And so we do hope that this brings you joy because we are happy to connect with you in this way and allow you the opportunity to have knowledge of uh, such a thing, yes? And many of you who are watching this and who resonate with Yvonne's messages do have Arcturian background, let's say, or Arcturian DNA, let's say. Um, you have been a uh, part of the Arcturian lifestyle uh, at one time or another. And many of you have several different star races within you, uh, some more dominant than others. You choose to experience different uh, uh, existences, let's say, in order to learn different skills. And each race, so to speak, has different skills that they bring to the table. So with the Arcturians, we are very focused on the heart, on the heart space, on the heart energy, on the expansion of the heart energy. We believe that the heart energy has the capacity to heal anything and everything. Yes, if you're opening yourselves from the heart space, you have the potential to transform, transmit, transmute, uh, integrate, process, create, alter, um, initiate, activate many different things. Yes, so being and working from the heart space is one of the most important aspects of any living creature, any living being in all of the universe. So this is our specialty to continue being and connecting and cultivating the energy of our hearts in order to cause uh, everything we mentioned, activations, integrations, um, alter, uh, alterations, let's say, uh, to, to create, create from a pureness of the heart uh, is very powerful. So yes, we want to say, yes, Patricia, you do have Arcturian within you. You do operate from the heart space. You are interested in this healing technology of creating from the heart. And this is uh, something within this lifetime that you have come here to share. And so, yes, definitely, uh, we would say that you are Arcturian. And many of you are who are watching this right now. So thank you very much for this question. This has been the Ninth Dimension Arcturian Council. Thank you. Thank you so much for that question, Patricia. That was awesome, fellow Arcturian and all of you who are Arcturians. Um, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, I have one more question and I wanna get this in before my phone <laughs> dies. Um, let's see. This is from Miranda. 
Um, I've thought about this for a very long time and finally today in a moment of clarity, my question came to me. I've been focused on flow and ease and kept looking for that feeling of flow and ease in all of the contrast I've come through most recently, breast cancer, which I know is okay and my prognosis could not have been better. My oncologist was so excited to give it to me saying that he's been looking to give such a prognosis for a while. Thank you, God, that it was given to me. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Um, I want to channel. I've asked for this often. I want to feel it for real. My question is, will I be channeling publicly in this lifetime? Okay, let's see. Will I be channeling? Hello, my dear one, such wonderful news, yes. And we want to acknowledge you also for being the one to heal yourself, dear one. Uh, this is not just magical happenstance, yes. This is something that you have done for yourself. And so we want to uh, acknowledge this. We want to say that with gratitude, we love the work that you are doing on the planet and that with which you emit into the environment uh, where you are. Uh, you, my dear one, offer a great frequency uh, to the environment and atmosphere with which you move in. So first we want to say this, we honor you for this, we thank you for this. Now. As we get to the question of, I want to channel, am I going to channel uh, within this lifetime? Let's see what wants to come through for you. Yes, well, so we're seeing is that you already channel, dear one. So this want and desire to have it uh, come to you in a form that is more public, let's say, uh, or more, um, uh, noticeable, more uh, being able to be seen and witnessed, let's say, is something that you may need to release, okay? So here we already see that you have done great work within yourself. You are already opened up your, your channels, so to speak, to receive messages. And they may not come in the way that you wish to, but this does not mean that it will not happen. So we want to be clear here in that anything you wish for yourself or have a desire to fulfill on is a seed that you have planted within you to be expressed, to be fulfilled. Now, how does it want to come through? Well, that is something you may have to explore. So it may not be a verbal channeling. It may be through writing. It may be through painting. It may be through singing. It may be through um, visualization, so to speak. It may be through energy, sensing, knowing. Um, so these are all different ways of receiving information and we all channel, dear one. So this is another reminder that when we are in the midst of channeling, so to speak, we are in the midst of time and space not existing, so to speak, in a human realm. We are in a flow where information is more easily received where space and time slows down, so to speak, or you experience the, the, the vastness of what is available to you. So when you are um, perhaps in a project working on something and you're like, whoa, where did the time go? I was so interested in what I was doing. This is a form of channeling. When you are in the midst of um, perhaps meditation and messages come to you or visualizations come to you or knowing comes into your heart, you are in the midst of channeling. Uh, so again, this is a place to explore vastness, the vastness of what is available to you, the vastness of potential, the vastness of possibility, the vastness of energy that lives within and all around you. The vastness of source itself, living, breathing, 
causing creation to be available to you in every moment and every second. So when you ask, will I ever channel or will I channel in this lifetime? You are. You are already channeling. Again, it just may not look or present the way that you want it to. And it, that doesn't mean that it will not eventually present the way you want it to, but you must first recognize the areas in which you are already channeling, the moments in which this is already occurring for you. To be open to this space, to be open to the energy being presented to you already in gratitude and acknowledgement. And practice where you are right now. Where do I receive information? How does it come through to me? Practice how you are already receiving information. Cultivate that with gratitude and acknowledgement. These are the two major and most important things in order for you to open yourself to the next level. Recognize first where you are. Be here without uh, the expectation of moving ahead. Be here. Experience this. Integrate this. Love this. Hold union with this. Relationship with this. And then follow the impulses of whatever comes from this. Am I getting the impulse or message to go walk um, down a dirt road in just my bare feet? Am I getting the impulse to put my feet on grass and meditate while being grounded to Mother Earth? Am I getting impulse to travel somewhere? I don't know why, but I'm getting the impulse I need to go to this location. Perhaps something will open up to me there. Or I keep getting this name uh, to work with this person Follow your impulses, follow your messages. Each one will lead you to the place you would like to be. And when we say that, there needs to be a balance, which here's where it becomes difficult for most humans, is to balance being in the present moment without the expectation of where will this lead me. So even while you are following your impulses, uh, being in that present moment of what's available to you then and now without the, okay, if I do this, then what's going to happen after that? Because we don't know. Even you yourself do not know because you are constantly within the moment of creation that when you follow one impulse, it then creates the possibility for many new pathways, many new potentials. And each choice develops the potential, the new potential, the new possibility. It could go in a variety of directions, but each choice creates the new container, let's say, limitless container for what is possible. So the adventure is unknown. What matters is that you stay um, firmly planted and in gratitude for the moment of adventure, for the process, for the experience in that moment, which then leads to another moment, another moment, another moment. But we do not know where those moments will take you. That, that is where life is lived. So thank you very much for your question, dear one. Uh, this has been the Ninth Dimension of Tree and Council. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Miranda. That was amazing. I really loved that guidance. Um, thank you to everyone who submitted questions and sent them through email. 
and and if you are interested in receiving guidance from the Arcturians please join my email list so that you can receive your own audio recording when I release that to the public and also looking forward to September's Q&A that will be coming up the first Saturday uh, of September and um, thank you for your patience with my return to YouTube and I'm so happy to be back with you here and I will see you next week with guidance from the Arcturians. Thank you. Bye-bye.